Okay, so the topic that we're beginning now is properties of the atmosphere. And atmospheric variables is the first section, um, which 6.1 is heat energy transfer. The aim for today is describe the three me methods of energy transfer. So if we're describing weather, we need some atmospheric variables defined. Um, if you're looking on the Weather Channel or the newspaper and you want to know what the weather will be like, some things you might want to know is especially the temperature. The moisture, the humidity. What type of precipitation and how much. The atmospheric transparency, which means how much cloud cover is out there. The wind direction and speed. And the air pressure. Okay, all these factors collectively make up the weather. Okay, so where does weather occur? Okay, the bottom layer of the atmosphere, which we know is the troposphere, uh, is the layer in which we live. We all remember this chart on the bottom of page, uh, the top of page 14 in the reference table. It's oh, okay. <laughs> and we're now going to talk about the three ways heat energy is transferred between objects. Okay, the first type is conduction. This occurs in solids by the collision of molecules. Heat transfers through solids by touch or contact with other molecules. Okay, so if we look at this picture here, you can see it's heating the metal. Each of those little blue balls represents atoms of the metal. Okay, as they heat up, okay, they vibrate against each other, spreading the heat across. The faster they vibrate, the more heat is being transferred through that metal. Okay, some examples of conduction is the, the pan. Obviously, if the pan has a metal handle, what's going to happen is that the heat is going to be conducted and then transferred through the metal uh, up into the handle, just about over there. Another thing is here is the flame. And if you're holding a metal bar, the heat is going to be transferred this way to the person's hand. And hopefully you put on an oven mitt at that point. That would be smart. That would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> Over here is a, um, right here, the yellow part is representing the contact metamorphism. And as it hits the rock, it's cooking the rock. It's conducting the heat. Okay, through within. the right? collision of molecules in the rock. Now the solid. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, convection is the next one. This occurs in liquids and gases, and it is caused by differences in density. Liquids and gases equal fluids, and air is considered a gas. Okay, hot fluids rise and expand. Okay, so we all know that to be true. Why do they rise and expand? because things that are hot are less dense. As the molecules of warm air shown in the picture on the bottom expand away from each other, they become less packed together and less packed molecules means they are less dense. Cold fluids sink and contract. When they contract, they come together, becoming more packed, which makes it more dense. Okay, so we see on this picture here, cold air molecules, more packed, more dense. Hot air molecules are less packed and less dense. Cell, the hot air goes up, goes across, goes down the cool air, and then it goes back to the hot air and then starts rising again, forming the cell. Some examples of convection is a radiator. Cool air that's lowered on the ground is going to come into the radiator, be heated, rise up, and as that warming, that warm air rises, it will cool off and come sinking back down, making a convection current. <laughs> and a, the same thing will happen if you heat up a glass of ice water. The hot plates on the bottom heating up that water, it rises, it hits the cold surface, cools and sinks, and you create a convection cell within that water. Are you thinking of Okay. And here's the example I'm sure you all know and remember. These are convection currents in the mantle, which are created as rising warm uh, magma 
comes to the surface, cools, and sinks down. And we all remember this is the mechanism for the movement of tectonic plates. Radiation travels by waves. Waves of light. Sorry, I hit the thing. Through space, some examples is oh well the mo the biggest example is the sun. This is a furnace, right? And as you burn coal, it gives off and radiates the heat out. Microwaves also radiate heat. And a tanning bed gives off the UV light, which radiates into your skin. How does energy get from the sun to the earth? Radiation. Oh, of course. Good job. <laughs> The sun is the primary source of energy for the Earth. The secondary source of energy is radioactive decay within the Earth's interior. Okay, so we have this little picture here that's showing all three types of heat transfer. So in this first um, pot, we can see water that is boiling. So what kind of, re of heat transfer would that be? I'll say later. Oh, that would be convection. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> yes. And here we have our metal pan, and our hand is on the handle. And this is conduction mm -hmm. through the solid. And finally, that flame of gas, which would, of course, be radiation. Very nice. Okay, so on a very hot day, what color would you not like to wear? Dark colors tend to absorb the most heat. Rough surfaces as well, so dark and colors, rough surfaces. For example, on a really hot summer day, you would not want to go out with barefoot on your black top pavement um, as your feet would get badly burned. Good absorbers are also good radiators, so if something absorbs heat really well, it also gives off that heat, and that's why your feet would burn on that, radi that black top surface. Best reflectors is... Go back. Oops. Sorry. Best reflectors are light colored and smooth surfaces. That's why you see the snowboarder or the skier wearing goggles to prevent the light coming in from being reflected back up into him from the snow or the ice. Okay, how does energy flow? So here we're looking at two cups of water. One is at 20 degrees and one is at 80 degrees. So if we look at these two cups, we have got a metal bar in between them. So what type of heat transfer would this be utilizing? This would be showing conduction. That's right. This is conduction. Okay, so we've got conduction going on between the two cups. Which way will the energy flow? So if you think about it, from which cup will heat be transferred to the other? Your energy always flows from high to low or from hot to cold, which is also known as from source to sink. So in this example here, the 80 degree cup would transfer heat across the bar, the molecules would collide against each other, into the cold cup, which would be heated up. So which would be the source of heat? Good. The Sorry. source would be your 80 degree cup, and which is your sink. The sink would be where the heat is going into, which would be our 20 degree cup. What type of heat transfer is this? We said it is conduction. And that is the end of our very first topic, 6.1 heat transfer. Yay!